In this tutorial, we're going to demonstrate how to model and calculate the toolpaths for the two-sided chess piece that you can see here. Now, if you've not worked on a two-sided project before, then I recommend that you watch the introduction to two-sided machining tutorial before continuing with this project. So let's go to File, Close. So let's start by creating a new file. So here we're working with a double sided job, we're going to have a width of 2 inches in there, a height of 6 inches and a material thickness of 1 and 3 quarters. Then we need to set as the zero position for the top side along with the bottom side. So this graphic on the left represents the top, graphic on the right represents the bottom. Now I'm going to set this off the material surface where I'm going to choose to zero off the same side. Now there is no right or wrong way to set this but I prefer to set the Z0 off the same side where the top side is on the material surface and the bottom side is on the machine bed. This way it just ensures that the Z is always referenced from the same face of your material. XY position will be in the lower left hand corner, we're going to flip this uh, along the X axis, we're going to work with a very high modelling resolution and then we could go ahead and press OK. So I actually have a sketch that I'm going to use as the basis for modelling up the King chess piece itself. So if we go over to File Operations, we're going to use this option here to import a bitmap and to open up the kingchesspiece.png file and you can see it's been imported into the centre of my session. And so we're going to use this to draw up our shapes to ultimately model the chess piece. Now we know that this kind of portion going down of the chess piece is actually rounded, it has a rounded profile and then the cross at the top is actually going to be fairly flat. So we're going to look at modelling this in two operations. We're going to have one component that represents the rounded body of the chess piece and then we're going to have one component that represents the flat cross that's going to sit at the top of the chess piece where the two components will merge together. Now as we're creating a part that is going to be identical on both sides to form the full true 3D piece, we'll look at creating all of the vectors and components for the top side to begin with and once we're happy with what we have then we can simply copy everything over to the other side where the software will align all of the parts in terms of their X and Y locations based on the way that we chose to flip the material over. And in our case, we chose to flip the material over along the X axis. And we'll see this later on in the tutorial. So to start with, we're going to look at the cross shape where I intend to model it as a fairly flat shape. So we'll look at using the create shape modeling function to create this and so that requires me to have a closed vector. Now when we're working with symmetrical shapes like we are here, we can get away with only drawing one half and then look at mirroring the vector afterwards. So it's always good to take a moment just to break down the part that you're about to trace where you should only draw as much as you really need to and let the software tools do all the hard work for you. So I'm going to look at drawing one side of the cross to begin with where I'll look at editing the vector to create a smooth shape and then we can look at mirroring the vector afterwards where we just join the two to create the full cross shape. And so to draw this I'm going to make use of both the geometry and the smart snapping capabilities. And if we just go over into our snap options I'm just going to bring my snapping radius down to its smallest which I prefer to use when tracing shapes. So we could go ahead and press OK. So let's just zoom in on the cross section here. Now the bitmap we've got is pretty much the same width as our job space so hopefully when we come in to use the polyline tool if we snap to the centre you can see it's actually at the centre of our drawing as well which is handy. So I'm going to snap to the centre there and we're just going to roughly sketch in a shape just loosely following 
the shape of the cross that we've got in our drawing right click to come out there okay so that's the basic shape of the left hand side so now we're going to go into node edit mode just to really control the shape here so I'm going to hover over this node and press S to smooth it and then we're just going to nudge it in and here is where we basically just pull on the handles, pull on the spans, adjust the nodes until we have a shape that looks like the shape of the drawing that we're actually working from. Okay, I might just want to move that up slightly and then move that over, maybe angle that down a little just to try and make that like that and bring that out and then working our way down press S on this node here just to smooth that out again we'll just line that up and then just move that over I want to take all of these and align all of the nodes in X okay so you can see we've got a nice straight line there but we've still got these nice curved corners and then at the bottom here I'm just going to take this node and just use the down arrow key and then we're going to take this node and we're just going to smooth it and then we're just going to bring that down bring that out I'm going to bring that up again and that's pretty much it for the left side of the cross so now we can take that go into the mirror tool we want to flip horizontally about the job center and create a mirrored copy like so. So there we have our two vectors now. So now we can just go ahead and join them using the join command. And at this tolerance, we can uh, join them and we'll have one closed vector afterwards. So we can close out and there is our closed vector. So now we can use that with the create shape tool to create a flat shape for the top of the cross. So let's just use this option here to zoom active view to the drawing limits. So next up we're going to look at the main shape. Now for this main shape I want to create a full rounded shape based on the profile or the silhouette of this chess piece. And so we're going to look at using the turn modeling function, which will allow me to turn a shape about its start and end points to create a full rounded shape. So I only need to draw one side of the chess piece where the software will take the vector and create a component from it as if it were being turned from start point to end point. Okay, so we're going to go back into the polyline tool and we're just going to zoom in. Okay, so here, this is going to start here. So we want to start that in the center line. Okay, so we're just going to do that somewhere around here and we're going to come out there and then we're just going to roughly sketch in all of the points like so. Just zoom out there just so I can uh, see the next part. Click there, click here here and then over here, here, here to this point, bring that back on itself, bring that back out, down a straight line and then across to the center line which we can see is there, click to accept that and we can right click to come out and then again we just simply go into node edit mode just to really alter the shape and bring it uh, out so it looks like the drawing. So with that vector selected, let's go over to the node editing mode and we'll just zoom in over here. Okay, so here we're just going to make this span a Bezier span. Okay, I'm just going to take that span and we're just going to pull that out and then I'm just going to take this top handle, just line that up uh, along that axis here. Then B to Bezier that and then just pull that out also. B over here, pull out the span. So we've got something that looks like this. Then I just want to take this handle here, this node, press Y on the keyboard to align them in Y. We'll do the same over here. So align those in Y. And then to we'll just undo that, what I should do is pick this one first, then this handle, then press Y. Okay, that's what I was looking for. Uh, move them on down, right click, we'll make that an arc. That can just stick out like that. Over here, right click, Bezier, take this span and we're just going to pull that out. I'm going to take that handle and just line that up like so. Take this handle, line that up there. Right click, Bezier on this span, 
again, pull that out, pull that out over here, and then over here, we're going to bezier this span. We'll just line that up uh, in Y there, and then bring that over in X. And then over here, right click Bezier. So you can see it's quite a repetitive process, uh, but we're just making all of these tiny adjustments just to ensure that the shape flows correctly as per the actual bitmap itself. So right click Bezier on this span, and we'll just take that span and pull it out. And then over here, we'll just take that node and just nudge it over to the left. And I think we're pretty much done there. Okay, so that's our vector there. Let's use this option here to zoom active view to the drawing limits. So now we have all of the vectors that we need to create our shapes. So let's go into the modeling tab. Okay, so we're going to start by organizing our levels. We're just going to rename level one by right clicking on that. Rename level and we're just going to call this level model. Okay, this will make more sense as to why I've done this later on in the tutorial when it comes to machining our part. But here we're going to put everything that we're going to model up for the main part of our total model, so the chest piece, that's the cross and the main body, are going to sit within this level. So let's just tile our windows so we can see the 2D on the left and the 3D view on the right hand side. We're going to start by looking at using the turn modeling tool and this vector here. And if we go into that option there, so create a shape by spinning or turning a vector. And so what the software will do, it will take a vector and it will turn it or rotate it around an imaginary line from the start point to the end point. So if we just go into node edit mode, we can see our start point here and our end point here. So there's going to be this imaginary line that runs between the two and this shape is going to be turned from that point here. Okay, So we're going to end up with a full rounded shape based on uh, this profile here. Okay, so if we just select that vector, we're going to use the turn option. We're not going to scale to an exact height, we want it to scale out to the full width of our vector that we're using to create the full rounded shape. And we're simply going to go ahead and then press apply. And so if we take a look in the 3D view, you can see we have this full rounded shape uh, based on the actual profile that's just been turned around the start and end points. Perfect. Okay, so I like what we've got there, so we'll put that in C. Let's close out. Let's just check the height of this. So we're going to select this component. We're going to go into the properties here. Okay, you can see we've got a shape height of 0.7693. Okay, so that's based on the uh, the widest part of the vector that we use to uh, turn this shape. So here we're just going to change the name. Okay, so we're just going to call this one King Chess Piece. Okay, I didn't actually put a name in the turn form there. I just went ahead and pressed apply. But we can change the name of components within the properties form here. So we're just going to call this the King Chess Piece and then we'll go ahead and close out. Next up, we're going to look at modeling the cross shape that's going to sit on top of the main body that we've got here and so we're going to look at creating quite a flat shape so as this is a closed vector we're going to go ahead and use the create shape form okay so the create shape tool allows us to create shapes where we assign a profile along with an angle to a closed vector so here we're going to go with an angled profile 45 degrees we're going to put in a base height of 0.1, just so we've got quite a bit of uh, depth underneath it, whereby we're going to limit the height of our shape to a very small 0.1. And so what we should see is a kind of a uh, flat shape with a very small angle that flattens off. And here we can set the combined mode of this cross to merge so that it blends in with the main body of the chest piece. And then we can just simply give that a name. We're going to call this one cross, press apply, 
and we can see it's been added there if we take a look in the 3d view we've got a nice uh, flat bottom there that's thanks to the base height and you'll see we have an ever so small angled uh, profile around the edge there where it's flattened off because we use the limit to height option okay so let's just put that in C and then we can close out uh, of that form so now that our model is complete we need to think about getting it ready for machining now as we're going to be machining a full two-sided part we need to think about how we're going to hold the part in place and how we're going to keep our material aligned when we come to flip the material over now when we come to machine the part we're going to use 3d toolpaths to cut this out and so we need to make sure that we have something in place to hold the chest piece to the material block and so we're going to look at adding in 3d tabs so to do that we're going to start by creating a new level so we're going to right click on the model level we're going to insert a new level we're going to right click we're going to rename it and we're just going to call this one tabs and we're going to set the combined mode of that level to merge so that all of these tabs blend in and merge into our chess piece model so if we go into the clip art tab you see we've got a section here called 3d tabs we're just going to look at the underscore rectangular tab okay so we've added that in there and you can see it's been added into our tabs level so we're just going to just move that out you can see at the moment this tab is far too big for our chess piece so we're going to look at sizing it setting the z height of it for the one and then we'll create copies of that tab and position it around uh, the appropriate areas of the chess piece so we're going to look at the right hand side of the cross the left hand side of the cross and then i think two at the bottom should hold that uh, part in place Okay, so with that tab, let's press 9 on the keyboard and then we'll do 9 again. That will rotate the part in increments of 45 degrees. And then if we come over here and we just set uh, the height of this, so we're going to alter the height to be 0.18. Link XY is checked. Press apply. You can see we're left with a very small tab. That's okay. And just position that in place. And then we'll just go over and we'll just check the uh, Z height here. So I'm going to click on this blue square in the 3D view. Okay, so we can see that we have a shape height of 0.0891. Okay, so that's actually not too bad. I'm just going to round that up to 0 0.09. And so when we come to create a copy of this tab but on the bottom side, we're going to have a total tab thickness of 0.18. Okay, so I think we're okay with that value there. So let's just close out. Okay, so now that we've got one in place, we can now go ahead and just look at creating copies. So I'm going to hold down Control and Alt, and we're just going to move that over to the left. Might just nudge it out a little like that. Then we're going to take that tab, press Control, and just move that down. And then we're just going to press 9, 9 on the keyboard to rotate it. And then we're just going to take that, position 1 somewhere here and then we can say control shift and H to create a copy horizontally and I think uh, we're pretty good with the position of uh, the tabs that we've got there so let's just put that back in C close out of the set size tool so to keep my material aligned in X and Y when we flip the material over I'm going to look at using the non-symmetrical dowel hole method this is where we would drill dowel holes partially through the top side and then in the software we'd copy the dowel positions of the top side over to the bottom side. I would then separately drill the holes for the bottom side directly into the spoil board, allowing us to have perfect alignment in X and Y when we flip the material block over. Now there are many other methods that you could use but I know that this method is fail safe as it allows us to use a non-symmetrical hole pattern because we're going to be able to reverse that pattern and machine it into the spoil board when we flip the part over and then we can ensure that when we flip our material that we only have one way that we could possibly relocate it onto our machine surface. And so this eliminates the fact that we might flip the part in the wrong direction to what we set in the software.
Now to create my dial positions, we're going to go into the drawing tab. We're going to use the draw circle option. Now I've measured up the diameter of the dials that I've got in the workshop and they come up at 0.33. So we're going to put in here a diameter of 0.33 there and then I'm just going to click to randomly position uh, these dials like so. So we just need two in this case. We're only working with a small area. And then we can simply close out uh, and then at this stage we now have everything set for the top side and we can look at copying everything over to the bottom side. So to do that I'm just going to drag a box over everything that we can see on the top so we can see everything selected, all the vectors are also selected and then we can right click and use the option here to copy to the other side. And the software will basically take everything that it can see here and it will just create a copy over to the bottom side. So now when we switch over to the bottom side, what the software has done is it's copied everything over based on our flip direction. In our case, we set that to flip that horizontally. Okay, and if I just flip back and forth, we can see what that looks like. Now, not only can we flip between the sides, but we are in multi-sided view, and so we can view our part in a multi-sided environment, which is really beneficial for us to see our part uh, with the full two sides put together, okay? So we can see the chess piece there. If you wanted to, we could just switch off the modeling plane. So go to view and just say, undraw modeling plane, so you can see our part we can see it lines up correctly there okay perfect so we'll just put that in C and I'm actually going to put that modeling plane back on there and then if we switch over to the bottom side and go into the modeling tab you can see it's copied all those components across but it hasn't retained the uh, level organization so let's just take a moment just to insert a new level we'll rename level one and we'll call that one model and then we'll right click on level two and rename that level we're going to call this one tabs and then we're going to set the combined mode of the tabs level to merge and we'll take all of those tabs and just drop them into that level just so we've got the same order that we have on the top side so now let's just take a moment to think about how we're going to cut the chess piece so let's just put this in the X view and we're just going to go ahead and maximize the 3D view. We're also going to switch off the multi-sided view. So we're just looking at one side. So here we're just looking at the top side. So we're going to cut the top side and the bottom side with 3D toolpaths. Now as standard, we know that the tool cannot go any further than the zero or the modeling plane at the bottom of our model on each side. And so in our example, we're going to look at finishing each side using a ball nose tool. And so where the point of the tool gets to the bottom of our model on each side will be presented with a cusping effect where it will be like a small amount of material left uh, creating a seam around the centre line of our model. And that's down to the fact that we are using a round tool. And the same would apply when we come to cut the other side as well. And so to eliminate this, we're going to look at applying an overcut distance in the form of a limit plane. So that the tool doesn't finish at zero here. We can actually drop it past uh, by putting in a negative uh, zero plane to eliminate the cusping effect, which would mean we should be left with a clean seam resulting in less manual cleanup time. And so to create an overcut, we need to create a limit plane. So let's just put that in Z and we're going to create that by just simply using the zero plane. Now, before we do that, we're going to create a new level. Okay, we're working with a new element of the design. So we're going to insert a new level. We're going to right click, rename that level. We're going to call this one limit plane. 
and then we're going to set the combine mode of that to merge so it blends in with our model and then here we can input a zero plane okay so a zero plane is just a plane of material that is set at zero it has zero height okay and what we're going to do is we're going to alter that height so that we basically negate it so we're cutting past zero so to do that let's go over and select the zero plane and then we're going to go over into the properties form so here we need to alter the base height so it's cutting past zero so we need to put a negative value in here so typically you want to put in the radius to the diameter of the tool that you plan to use here to overcut by that amount so that we can eliminate the cusping at the bottom of the model so i'm going to plan to finish this with a 16th inch tool so if we put in the value 1 slash 16 followed by the equals key then we'll get the decimal value that we need there and then we must remember to put a negative uh, minus sign in front so that we're negating it uh, and that is now our overcut distance so if we take a look at our part down the x-axis, you can see that we have this translucent plane. Okay, So this is our modeling plane, which we know is at zero. And then now we have this newly created plane that has a negative base height that is essentially our overcut distance. And this will now enable us to cut past zero by a sixteenth of an inch and that will cut away at any cusping that would have been left around the seam of the model if it was just to limit that to zero. We only need to do this uh, for the one side. So let's just alter the name of that. So we're just going to call that one limit plane and then we can just simply close out. Let's just put that back in the Z view there and we'll just zoom out like so. So now I'm ready to move forward and create the toolpaths for the part. Okay, so we're going to start by creating the toolpaths for the top side. So let's just switch over to uh, the toolpaths tab. Okay, I'm just going to tile our windows so it can see both the 2D and the 3D view. Now, as with any session, it's important that you go and check over your material setup. So let's use the set option there. So the material thickness we're working with is one and three quarter inch. And we're going to set the XY datum position in the lower left hand corner. And then the Z zero position for the top side, we're setting that to the material surface. Model position in material. Now it's very important, just like any jobs where we have a model, we want to position the model within the thickness of our material. Now this model thickness that we displayed here will factor in the entire model, that being both the top and the bottom size. And so we are in fact positioning the overall part within the material block here. So I'd like to position the model in the dead center of our material so that we have a gap above and below. You can see we've got a gap above of just over 0.1 on each side. This way we can avoid the potential to have any flat spots due to uneven material. Then we want to check over the rapid Z gaps above the material, your clearance and plunge settings, just making sure that they're large enough to clear any clamps that you're using. Uh, in our case, I'm just going to just leave these settings as they are, assuming that they are all safe to do so. Okay, so we're going to go ahead now and press OK. So first off, we're going to start by creating our dowel holes. So let's take this vector here, hold down shift and select this vector here. We're going to go into the profile toolpath. Here we're going to start this at zero and then we're going to have a cut depth of 0.7 of an inch. Okay, so we're cutting into our material by 0.7. We're going to use a quarter inch end mill in this case. I can see that that is already selected here. So we're just going to go with that. You can use the edit option just to glance over the settings, ensuring that they're safe and appropriate. In this case, that seems reasonable. We're going to machine inside of these vectors. 
Okay, and then once we've machined inside, we can just work our way down and we can just give this a name and we're just going to call this one Dow Holes, like so. And then we can simply go in there and press calculate and the software will calculate that for us. And we can take a look at that here in the preview toolpath form. Okay, so a very simple toolpath there. So let's just close out. So next up, we're going to run a 3D roughing toolpath. Okay, so in here we're going to select a tool, in this case we're going to use an 8th inch end mill, check over the settings, ensuring they're safe and appropriate, and then you could go ahead and press select. Next we need to specify the machine in limit boundary. Okay, so we've got four options, this is where we tell the software how we want to machine, or the area in which we want to machine inside. Okay, so we've got the model boundary. Okay, so the model boundary will take the composite model as the full uh, outline of the part, the bounds of the part to machine. Now, this would be pretty useless in this case because we'd cut out our tabs, so we're not going to use that option. We have material boundary that takes the whole material. Again, that's useless as that will cut our tabs out. And we have selected vectors. Now, we don't actually have any vectors in our job to use so we're not going to use that option however we are going to look at the selected level option so if we just hover over our modeling tab and click on the modeling tab there you'll see that the way that i organized our component tree was through three different levels we've got the model level tabs level and the limit plane level now everything within the model level forms the actual chess piece of the part that we want to make okay now, if we choose the model level in this case as our model boundary, it's going to take all the components that are in that model level and use that as the kind of 2D outline in order for us to machine. But because we're doing it by level, it's still going to um, factor in the other components within our composite model, so the tabs and the limit plane, and we'll include them in the actual cut that we're going to do. And so that means that we'll cut over the tabs to create the tabs, but we're not cutting the tabs out. And it also means that we'll get down past zero to that limit plane that we specified. So here we're going to use the model level. Then we can specify an offset, so we'll just put in uh, an eighth of an inch here just so the tool rolls past the edge of the part. Then the machining allowance, we'll put in 0 0.02 just so that we have a skin of material left on the finished surface for the finishing tool to cut into. We're going to do this in a Z-level strategy where we're going to raster along the x-axis. Then we're going to give that a name and we'll call that one 3D roughing press calculate and the software will just take a moment to calculate that for us and then that will open up the preview toolpaths form we can see the toolpath there and then we could go ahead and preview the toolpath to see how that would be simulated if we was to cut this out on our cnc machine so we can see all of the steps in there Okay, perfect. So let's just put that in C and then we'll close out of the 3D roughing form. And now we can go into the 3D finishing toolpath. So here we need to select a tool. So use the select option. I'm going to choose a 16th inch ball nose. Check over the settings, ensuring that they're safe and appropriate. I mean, you choose our machine and limit boundary. In this case, we're going to use that model level again. And to put in a boundary offset of 0.1, we're going to machine this in a raster strategy. We're going to raster that at an angle of 90 degrees. So it's in line with the Y axis. And then we could simply go ahead and just give that a name. We'll just call it 3D finish and then press calculate. Software will take a moment to just calculate that for us. And then it will open up that preview toolpath form. So we can see that there and then we could go ahead and just preview that toolpath. So you can start to see the tab there. We can see a tab at the bottom, tab on the left, uh, and the tabs there also. Okay, so that's pretty much it for the top side. One other thing that's also worth mentioning is if I run my cursor 
along this the deepest part that it's cut here you can see at the bottom there we're displaying a z value of negative 0.9375 and so it's cut past the halfway point of our material which is at 0.875 and it's gone over by that 16th of an inch um, overcut distance that we specified to get to this 0.9375 value Okay, so in reality, at this point, what we do on the machine is we take our material block off, we'd insert the dowels into this hole here and to this hole here, and then would now look at the toolpaths for the bottom side. So let's close out the preview toolpaths form, and then we're going to switch over to the bottom side. Okay, so as usual, we just check over our material setup. Now, you shouldn't really have to change anything here. We're just checking it just relates to what we've been working with currently. So working with the same material thickness, XY datum is in the lower left. Then we set our Z0 position for the bottom side, which in this case is on the machine bed. Okay, so you'll remember at the very start of this job in the job setup form, we chose to set the Z0 off the same face. And so that's why we're seeing the Z0 on the bottom for the bottom side. And this really just ensures that Z is always referenced from the same face of your material. Moving on to model position in the material, you do not want to change this. This just remains exactly the same in the center, so we do not want to alter this. Rapid and Z-gaps above your material, we've got a quarter of an inch for both of those in there, and we've got a Z-gap above the material for our home and start position of 0.26. Okay, so we'll just cancel out there, everything looks good. Now if we take a look at our toolpath summary here, you'll see our home position, we've got x0, y0, and our z is shown as 2.01. So you'll remember we send the safe z as 0.26 inches above the material, and here it's actually displaying as 2.01. And so it's taking into account that we are zeroing off the machine bed we're working with one and three quarter inch thick material and the safe z is at 0.26 above the material and that's why we're seeing this value here right then so the first operation here is to run the dowel holes into the spoil board and so physically we would have set aside our material block and we're going to set the z0 position from the machine bed We'd look at running the toolpath for the dowel holes, which we're yet to calculate. We're going to drill those directly into the spoil board, which will enable us to align the two sides correctly. Okay, so the dowel holes that we're going to do now are for the spoil board only. We are not cutting into our material. And once we've cut the dowel holes into the spoil board, you can then flip your material over in the X direction to align the dowels that are in the top side to the dowels in the spoil board. Okay, so let's go over into the profile toolpath. So here we're going to select the vectors for the dowels on the bottom side. So the start depth in this case, we're actually going to put in the full thickness of our material that we are using. Even though the material isn't going to be on our machine when we run this toolpath, we just need to factor in that depth because we are setting our Z0 off the machine bed. So it's going to account for this thickness and then it will machine into our spoil board by whatever cut depth we specify here. In this case, we're going to go with a 0.7 in this case. Here we'll go with a quarter inch end mill and then we'll just give that a name. We're going to call this one dowel holes and then I'm just going to put in a reminder here that this is for the spoil board only. Okay, and then we can go ahead and press calculate. Software's warning me that we are going to cut into our spoil board and that's what I intend to do. Okay, so you can see in our preview, you'd have to kind of ignore the fact that we can see this material block here because we're not actually going to cut into that material block but we are just going to come down and then start at our um, start our machining in straight into the spoil board going down by 0.7 uh, of an inch there right then so let's just put that back in Z 
And so with those holes cut into the spool board, we can now take our material, we can flip it over in this direction, going horizontally, aligning the dowels into the dowel holes of the spool board, and then we can secure the part in place. So now I know I have exact alignment in X and Y for the bottom side. We can now start to look at running the 3D toolpaths for the bottom side. So here we're just going to close out, just going to undraw the visibility of that toolpath and we're going to go into the 3D roughing toolpath. So here we're going to work with the same settings that we applied to the 3D roughing toolpath for the top side. So here we're going to use an 8 inch end mill, we're going to use the selected level whereby we're using the model level as our machining limit boundary and so that's going to include those tabs in there so we don't lose those. And then we're going to have an offset of an eighth of an inch, a machine allowance of 0 0.02 in there. We can machine that in a Z level strategy along the X axis. We'll give that a name, we'll just call that 3D roughing, and then we could go ahead and press calculate. Okay, so the software has took a moment to calculate that for us and it's opened up the preview toolpaths form. So in the preview tool plus form, we also have the option here to preview all sides when working with a two sided part. And so that will preview the side you're currently working on as well as the top side or the other side of your material. So let's do that. We'll use the preview all sides option. Okay, so you can see that it's actually previewed the dowel holes uh, for our spoil board. Now we wouldn't actually see this in our material block um, because obviously we'll be machining those directly into the spoil board without the material there. But the software doesn't know that we're doing that. That's why it's previewing it as if we are machining into our material. So here's the top side and here is the bottom side and if I spin that around so that's what we finished off earlier and this is what we're doing now okay so that's the 3d roughing for the bottom side there okay then so let's close out here and then let's go into the 3d finish toolpath so again the same settings 16th inch ball nose here we're going to use the model level we'll have a boundary offset of 0.1 we're going to raster that uh, 90 degrees, so parallel to the Y axis, and then we can just give that a name, we'll call that one 3D Finish, and then we could go ahead and press Calculate to see how that looks, and then the software will take a moment to calculate that for us, and then we could go ahead and actually preview that uh, as part of our overall simulation. And so if we come up here and switch on the multi-sided view, we should be able to get a better idea of how our part's going to be cut out. So you can see our tabs are holding it in place at the top here, at the bottom here. And if I hold control down whilst hovering over the tabs, you can see at the bottom there displayed is our thickness. That's the full thickness of the two parts together. And we're getting a tab thickness of 0.18, which is what I told you earlier when we come to create the thickness for the one part of our tabs where one side would be 0 0.09. Okay, so our tabs are holding that part in place. We can see everything lines up correctly. We have no seam going around the outside of our part and that's all down to the fact that we applied an overcut distance uh, to machine down to. So we have a nice uh, smooth edge uh, which would require minimal cleanup. So at this stage we can now go ahead and save out our toolpaths. So let's go over to the top side and then we'll go over to the save toolpath option. Here we have the option to add side to the toolpath name and so this will basically prefix the name of our toolpath with the side that we're currently saving the toolpaths from. In this case, it'd be the top side. And so here you'd check that the toolpath to be saved is the correct toolpath. Choose your appropriate post processor from the list. Use the save toolpath option and you'll see that it's put top in front of dowel holes. If we cancel out and go to a 3D roughing, 
you'll see again it's put the word top in front of the 3D roughen as is the same for the 3D finish and then if we switch over to the bottom side again go to the dowels use the save option with that add side to toolpath name option checked you'll see now it's saying bottom and then if we go to 3D roughen bottom 3D roughing and then finally bottom 3D finish and so it just helps you remember which side these toolpaths are applicable to. Okay so let's just close out there and so you take those toolpaths uh, and then send them over to your CNC machine for cutting. Okay so as with uh, any file it's always good practice to save the file so let's go to file save as and then in the project folder uh, we're actually going to call this one king chess piece and then we'll call that one two sided machining and you can access that from your project folder.